In this video, we are analyzing Jennifer Price's The Plastic Pink Flamingo from the English Composition AP Exam from 2006. To begin, we'll start with the arch method. We'll follow that with a rhetorical square. If you don't know how to do a rhetorical square or an arch method, there are videos before this one that you can watch. We start with a prompt. The prompt asks students to read and it asks them to analyze how Price crafts the text to reveal her view of United States culture. A lot of students were able to identify that what they're being asked to do is to analyze rhetoric, how she crafts her text, but they missed this piece to reveal her view of the United States culture as her purpose. They, many students were able to identify that she was expressing her view, but they did not identify her view. Uh, she's criticizing the United States culture for, among other things, being superficial and selfish. So I wrote that above the arch and down below it we have um, bullets ready to record uh, rhetoric that we see. After setting up the arch I asked students to consider analyzing the macro structure and I divided the text into two pieces. The first half talks about the flamingo being bold and the flamingo color pink being bold and how it relates to the culture of the United States. The second piece is talking about, um, it closes the essay uh, with, um, with great energy. The first paragraph, the intro, talks about the historical precedent and the historical placement of the flamingo, starting with the city of Miami. Uh, paragraphs one and two continue that, uh, talking about how the flamingo is bold. Paragraph three talks about the pink, the color, the color pink, and how that is also bold. Uh, the last paragraph here, paragraph four, uh, is quite um, interesting. It starts off with a, a rhetorical question. And it's asking, why, after all, call the birds pink flamingos, as if they could be blue or green. Um, the rhetorical question is not meant to be answered. It's trying to launch this piece. Uh, the next uh, part is this whole um, sentence that uh, has a scientific tone, which seems out of place. The scientific tone of uh, this sentence uh, if it's followed by the list of uh, examples from history. Again, connecting back to the introduction, where in this history um, uh, sentence you have early Christians, ancient Egyptians, Mexicans, and Caribbeans, um, and this sets up her concluding sentence. I like to start with the argument. Uh, our rhetorical square asks, what is the message, the claim, the thesis? And in my opinion, according to what I read, uh, the argument is that the plastic flam flamingo's history in the United States reveals and symbolizes a decadent U.S. culture. I think that she is, in her purpose, criticizing the U.S. culture of appropriation, of consumption, of uh, following trends and fads with a kind of super... A lot of students described her, as, uh, her view as uh, selfish. I think that she is trying to reveal American hypocrisy, uh, especially by trying to force uh, celebrity worshippers and trend followers to question the way that they act. Um, the purpose is here for our rhetorical square is asking what actions does the author want the audience to take, but in um, this essay there was a great focus on what is the author trying to do. The next piece, the persona, asks, how does the speaker establish common values with the audience? What is the tone? How does the diction create it? And what is the 
persona's effect. What is the intended impact? And price has a great deal of sarcasm. That was the first word that came to mind. And even though she does have an academic tone, the uh, sarcasm seems to um, shine and, and come out a lot more. Uh, in paragraph two, uh, this was a little ironic since Americans had hunted flamingos to extinction in Florida in the late 1800s for plumes and meat. But no matter. In the 1950s, and she goes on, this three sentence, three word sentence, um, together with later on in the paragraph, Anyone who has seen Las Vegas knows that a flamingo stands out. These two pieces of text here stand out to me as someone who is sarcastic, even uh, perhaps uh, belittling uh, someone who might disagree with her. Um, because anyone who has seen Las Vegas, uh, if you don't, then, then you're, you're nothing. Um, and she has this line here, semiotic sprouts, um, a word obviously from academia that a lot of uh, people will not know. Um, her tone is academic at certain places up at the top where she describes um, the history of the flamingo and later on here in the last paragraph where she discusses the invertebrates and the algae in saline and alkaline lakes um, and the uh, citations from uh, literature. You have Tom Wolfe, you have Car, uh, Carl and Marling, um, and even though she has all this, there is a there's a slipping into popular culture where you have uh, references to Elvis Presley and even uh, Gangster down here with uh, Bugsy Siegel in the Las Vegas um, piece. So for Persona, she's establishing herself and her credibility as an academic. She is. Um, establishing uh, a kind of a sarcastic, uh, funny tone. Um, and most of all, I think that her, a lot of her references are references that a lot of people can relate to. Um, they're very popular, and uh, people will be able to understand uh, without having uh, a feeling that she's disconnected from the culture. And now at the end, we have the audience. The question asks, who is the intended audience? Uh, how does the author anticipate and manipulate the audience's emotional reaction? As we discussed, she starts uh, her text with this academic and historical tone. I think that what she's trying to do is lull the reader into trusting uh, the author with this focus on history. And it's not until the line 15 sentence, but no matter, that her real tone um, is revealed. And in the rest of the essay, paragraphs 2 to 4, she pulls no punches in drawing all these examples to highlight just how bad U.S. culture is. I think she is able to effectively manipulate her audience because she selects her issues very carefully. She chooses... Um, examples that are popular uh, with a wide audience. She chooses cities that everybody can connect to, um, cities in Florida and Las Vegas, and compares them and contrasts them with New Jersey. Of all places, New Jersey. Uh, there's a little bit of nuance here with the discussion of the snow, perhaps in New England, uh, con contrasting that with some of these uh, tropical places like Mexico and the Caribbean, again, Vegas and Miami. But all in all, I think that she chooses her examples, Elvis Presley and uh, the Pink Flamingo and uh, Bugsy Siegel, in order to have a connection with her audience um, and manipulating the examples. She's the writer, so she can choose whatever example she wants. Uh, so we set up our rhetorical square. This is the template that uh, we've been using. And... We started with a discussion of the argument, we moved to purpose, we discussed the persona, and the persona ties really well with the audience. If you want to uh, use the Greek uh, terminology, we have the argument and logos, we have a building of ethos in the persona, and finally 
um, connection to pathos, the audience's uh, emotion. And with that, we're ready to write our essay. Thank you.